So let's start up with the mouth and work through the digestive system and body parts. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Here we have the mouth of the mink split open so that we can see the different parts. The first thing we need to talk about is the, um, the dental formula. The dental formula of the mink is three, one, three, one on the upper jaw and three, one, three, two on the lower jaw. And you can study that and find out what each number stands for. While we're on this particular situation, you can see the hard palate and the rugae of the hard palate really well right here. That is formed by the fusion of the maxilla bones on the front and the palatine bones on the palate part. Behind that, we have a softer muscular flap called the soft palate if I can get the tongue out of the way enough to see that. And then my hand, soft palate, right here. And we've split through that to go into the nasopharynx behind it. But that's the soft palate right there. The tongue is, of course, this large structure that's been split in half. Behind the mouth is a cavity into which food passes called the pharynx. That is it right up in here. At the top, at the bottom of that, there's a leaf-like structure called the epiglottis that has the job of closing over the respiratory system so food doesn't go down it. It's at the top of the larynx. The larynx is the first quarter inch to half inch of the trachea right in here. It is solid, nice cartilage. And below it, you can see the incomplete rings of the tracheal cartilage. Below it makes it look like the vacuum cleaner hose. Right there. The trachea splits at the bottom to go to the two lungs, way on down there, into bronchi, which I don't believe we have on our list, but they split and go into the lungs right down there. Okay. Behind the trachea, we have a tube that is elastic in nature. That is the esophagus. There it is. You have to move the trachea out of the way to see the esophagus behind it. And that's what I'll do for the practical. I'll have the trachea moved out of the way and have a pin in that so that we can tell that. That esophagus continues through the mediastinal space behind the heart and passes through the diaphragm. That didn't help at all. Passes through the diaphragm to go to the abdominal cavity where it goes to the stomach. Now way up in the top of this, is where the uh, esophagus comes through. This is the stomach. The stomach is made up of several regions, just for knowledge purpose. We have the cardiac region of the stomach where the esophagus enters, the fundus region of the stomach, the body of the stomach, and the last part, the J-shaped curve of it, is called the pyloric region of the stomach. And here we have what's called the lesser curvature, and this is the greater curvature. The reason that's significant is because the spleen this structure right here is always described as being on the greater curvature of the stomach, on the outside curvature, and there it is, right there, the spleen. Very large. Looks like liver. That is another structure we need to see is the liver right up here. Embedded in the liver, we have a gallbladder, if it's still present in this particular animal. And it should be. It's right in here. Gallbladder. Oops, I chipped off some liver. It doesn't show up good in this animal. I'll find another animal that has that later. In fact, I've got one, so we can do that. Oh, wait. There's the gallbladder. So it'll be soft. It's softer than liver tissue. So if it's a pen that's not in the liver, but it's somewhere, it looks like it's in the liver, but it's not really in the meat of the liver, but in something else with the liver, you know it's the gallbladder. That's it right there. And it does look different in different animals. But that is soft tissue as opposed to <laughs> liver. <laughs> <Yeah>. <coughs> Let's move on with the digestive system. We'll do it completely. Okay. The digestive system, we've already started with the mouth and we've come down through the esophagus to the stomach. At the end of the pyloric region of the stomach, there's a little sphincter muscle. There's a constriction, a nice little constriction. You can see it in a little tightening up spot right there. That is the location of the pyloric valve, which controls the emptying of the stomach contents into the first section of the intestine called the duodenum. It's a duodenum. It's about the first three inches here. Embedded in the ventral mesenteries, inside that curve of the duodenum, we have pancreatic tissue, <coughs> pancreas. The pancreas continues under the stomach over to the spleen right here. This is all pancreas as well. Also in this area, we have a very large vein called the hepatic 
portal vein right there, which takes, has the job of taking all the absorbed nutrients from the intestines to the liver to be processed. Passing also beside that vein are the hepatic ducts. I said that wrong. <laughs> it's the common bile duct. The common bile duct from the gallbladder down to the um, duodenum. The pancreatic duct goes from the pancreas to the duodenum and empties its digestive fluids in there. The next section of the small intestine, which I will not use on the practical, is called the jejunum. It's just about three or four inches long, and this animal it is indistinct and hard to label. The remaining coils of the small intestine is called the ileum. Huge amount of ileum there. The ileum continues till it gets to the ileocecal valve, which is right about here on this animal, right about there. And the colon is really not like the human colon. The human colon has four parts and is all the way around the outside periphery of the small intestine. The colon in this animal is just right here. This is it, the whole thing. That is the colon. It's the same thing as the large intestine. At the base of that, we have the rectum down at the bottom. And, of course, the undigested products exit by way of an anus.